Thank you, John. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, and I believe that the people can hear you. Yes, right, okay. I can hear you. Okay, can we give them up to 10 minutes past? I request we give members to join up to 10 minutes. We are just four minutes behind before we can start. Is that okay, John? Yeah, I think uh, we can be, we can flex up the, the period. It's okay. Okay, thank you. video at this point. So that, that first part is, uh, is simply who Debbie is. And the purpose I put it here is so you understand that while you are talking about uh, branding, you need to know who you are. You need to be able to ably present it and uh, people can read it and just understand who you are so that they can then relate with you. So as we start our session, each one of us should be able to create such a page. I have other pages, but this is specifically for today to know your W's and it will be the focus of our conversation, the where, the why, the what, the who, and the how. Um, we'll focus on the W's of branding. Like I said, we need to know who needs to really have a professional brand. What is even a professional brand? Someone asked me when they saw that flyer, they said, oops, Debbie, I thought this was simply for companies and organizations. We're going to dive into that to have the answer. Where, where do we then present a professional brand? When do we even do this? When do we actually develop our brand? Why? What's the purpose? And there's a how, and that will be the final bit. I will leave the room well knowing that at least you know the how. And this is a very wide topic but my friends at ISACA and any other friends that have joined, I will just scratch the surface for us so that then we can go on and read more and see how then to develop our professional brand. So I wanted us to just have that question. You can drop it in the chat and maybe the moderator will tell us later how well the answer is like, do you have a brand? My answer is yes. This question just requires a yes or no. You can drop it in the chat. Do you have a brand? Break, break what's in your brain as you join this session this evening. Do you have a brand? And when I say a brand, don't look at the organization where you work. Don't look at your family. Focus on yourself as John. Focus on yourself as Rita and as Jimmy and the rest of us. If you have a notebook, you'll require to write. There are many questions I could be posing. So at the end of the day, you'll have to answer those questions when you're back into your spaces. So do you have a brand? If your answer is a no, then who are you? I have that question there. Who are you? Do you know actually who you are? And I've put some of those brands there that do not necessarily have a name. I don't know if they positioned you somewhere. Would someone tell your brand? Would someone relate with your brand? You can see some of the brands that some of you love there. There's a Mercedes Benz. There's Nike. Why would you relate with Nike? And as I talk about these, 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 uh, these companies, these images, put your image there. I want you to put yourself in that corner and ask yourself a big question. Who am I actually? I look at Total. I look at, at uh, Toyota, which is in Uganda. I don't have to explain. Most of us relate with it, or most of you. I look at MTN. But who are you? If they put Debbie there, if they put my image, would people quickly relate with the brand that I am? And this is the reason I'm presenting us this question. I have so many rhetorical questions. Rhetorical questions do not need an answer, but they need you to digest and think through them and say, my, what is this I'm hearing today? Times are gone, you must create that brand. You must be very intentional about developing your brand. And so I get into the one word. I don't know if some of us have that one word that could describe us professionally. Remember, we are talking about developing that professional brand. Look at the words that have been put here. Would you relate with any of them? Professionally does not only mean people who are employed in the workplace. Some of us are self-employed. Some of us are out there. 
on our own, but doing, adding value to our communities, to our societies, to people around us. Are you doing whatever you're doing in a very professional way? That's the purpose. Now we come to say, are you developing then that professional brand? Many words there. I don't know which word you have picked, but I always speak energetic. I always speak enthusiastic. You've seen it in my brief bio. I am enthusiastic. I'm passionate about what I do. I'm excited about what I do. I'm in love with what I do. I put energy to it. Professionally, what are you putting? Are you the strategic one? Are you the engaging one? So as we go along, I need you to find out. So if I say I want to be that creative person, how do I then build a creative professional brand? And these words are for you. There are quite many out there, but these are for us to think through. So people ask, we thought brands are for only big companies. No, my friends, your brand, a brand, these are the simple words. It's your visibility. Are you seen? And remember we say visibility then is ability. So are you seen and are you able to add value professionally? It is your reputation. How do people know you? What do you leave on your trail? What do people know you for? What do you represent? My friend Jeff uh, Bezos says, your brand is what other people say about you when you are not in the room. That is our definition for the night. Your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. We are looking at our individual uh, brands. Don't look at any other person tonight. What are people saying about you when you live, in the, when you live that room? When you're not in that boardroom, when you leave that church, when you leave that, whichever space you've been seated in, what are people saying about you? That is your brand. I am sure all of us would want good things to be said when we leave. So you've heard my profession. I am a, uh, I'm a human resource enthusiast. And I will not hide that we do interviews, that we interview you when you come, that we, 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 we look after our staff that we make sure everything is in place. But there comes a time when the business wants to hear about you and they'll come to say the head of HR and say, tell me about, uh, about Christine. Now this is your brand they're talking about. And in good faith, people want to relate to that brand that is good, that adds value, that resonates with everyone, that has that perfume around them. So what Jeff is saying, I do not know what they say about you, my friends. My brand today, when I leave, I suck up. My brand will be, what are you going to talk about, Deborah? That is my brand. So we need to be very cautious as we develop this brand and say, have I developed that brand that people will relate with? That is what I live in the room. Jeff also says, your brand is what they'll say about you when you're not in the room when you have left the room. There are two things. Sometimes you're not in the room, you've not even been there and they're talking about you for purposes of value. So my friends, big one for us there to ponder. So simply your brand is how you see yourself. How do you view yourself useless? That is how you're seeing yourself. So if you say you're how are others seeing you? If I stand up today and I say, I am of impact in my organization, what will others see? Because what I say is what I'm going to do. And it's simply how you are seeing yourself how others are seeing you. These two are going to save themselves and create that intersection. That intersection that is in yellow. What we learned tonight is you create your own brand. You create your own brand. And I'll focus on the word intentional, that you must be intentional to create, to develop that professional brand that will enable others see you and therefore see and say, wow, 
today we understand that this is Debbie's personal brand, that this is John's personal brand. So friends, if you come to the blue and see yourself as in red, your danger, people will see the same and they will make, and they will make that perception. This is something they will not touch. They will make that perception and say, yes, this is what we see. So what do you want people to see? Question again, I said I have so many rhetorical questions. What do you want other people to see in that brown? Please come back to the blue and be intentional and make it. You must mold your own brand so that people can then tap it and say, this is her brand. I don't know how many of us out there did know that you will make your own brand. Some of us want to blame our culture. We want to blame our great grandfathers. We want to blame everyone around us apart from ourselves. We want to blame everyone for the bad brand maybe that we have. My friends, tonight you can choose to say, no, I am going to rebrand myself. I'm going to work so hard and have that brand that can be really related with, that adds value to the people around me. I'm going to take us now to that personal brand. I've been talking about the personal brand. But when Isaka invited me, the topic was developing the professional brand. And there's a connection between these two. Before you develop your professional brand, you must first have a personal brand. Question number one I asked, do you have a brand? So if your answer is no, then you can't even move to the professional brand. You will come back to say, let me work on my brand. Is your blueprint in life? That is the, the blueprint simply, simply looks at you in life. You design. Hello, Debra. You model. That's your blueprint in life. Your personal have. And this I said you must. Yes, please. Yeah, you, we missed some point from when you were trying to bring the personal brand. There was a break in the network. Maybe you could just. From the time you say if you didn't answer your personal brand, then there is no need for going for professional. I think that's where we lost you a little. Could just come oh, again. So, oh, so sorry about the network, friends. I pray it's not uh, disturbed again. So I was saying, if I asked question number one, do you have a personal brand, a brand, and you said no, then you cannot move on to the professional brand. What comes first is your personal brand that all of us must have. And all of us do have. You could have a bad or a good one. That's also the other note. So I think you must first work on your personal brand. And your personal brand is simply showing us your blueprint in life, your plan, your model, your design in life. Who are you? Or who are you designed to be? Or who do you want to design actually to become? It is having those unique elements that others do not have. Is it in your expertise, in experience, or extraordinary achievements? When they were reading um, Jimmy's bio, I saw extraordinary achievements. That's part of his personal brand. What expertise do you have that's part of your uh, personal brand? What experience do you have? And don't only look at your academics and your work experience. There's more to this. Move, move, and look at everything else in life. Self-branding then, or personal branding, is an essential step to the professional brand. And this is bringing us to what our discussion must end up with. Our end point is defining and developing that professional brand. And we are simply saying, you can see the star in the middle. If you can blend these two, then you're professionally. And professionally is simply having a visible map around your career. So when we go to professional, we focus on the career. When we come to personal, 
know, it's an all round Deborah, but professionally we'll focus on your career. Jimmy, am I still yeah, you're, uh, you're breaking. audible? You're breaking, you're breaking. Uh, Hi, Jimmy. Yes, yes, I can get you, you're a little break breaking. breaking. Oh, hello? I Debra, can you get me? To change the location. Can you get me? Yes. Uh, Debra, we have lost. Yes. We we are unable they to. Can... Okay, it's breaking again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, give. Me... Okay. Uh, Jimmy, am I better now? I've changed location. Yes, yes. Now that's better. Thank you. Okay. Proceed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry about that disruption, my friends, but we proceed. Uh, and I was at the professional brand to say it is a visible mark around your career. So we focus our professional brand on the career while personal brand will focus on an all round person. And we are saying that with your professional brand, you will achieve this by having specific strengths and messages that people remember about you. While you are at ISACA, while I'm at, at HR uh, Managers Association, what is that strength that I possess? What is that message that people will remember me for? And this is the visible mark we are talking about in your career. I am very sure I was invited for this conversation because in my career, I have purpose to say, as I add value to others, I will give back. I will give back. I will uh, unlock people's potential. I will leave people not the way I found them. So that takes us to the professional brand. But I wanted us to look at those levels. Now I've talked about the branding being visible. If you look at this uh, slide, having a visible mark. But now when I was doing this research, something, something interesting I, I found that there are levels of visibility, brand visibility. And we need to keep in mind that each successive uh, step requires more effort and time than the step below it. So we shall go to step one. And as, as I take us through this, I want you to map yourself, which step are you at as of today? We have from one to five, and you cannot go to five before three. So we are saying every step requires more effort. How do we move through these steps and be the kind of brands, professional brands that you want to be? So the first one is a, res a resident expert. This is well respected within their circles, the professional circles. They have little visibility outside those audiences. So outside ISACA, you are not visible. You either have little or no visibility, but you're well respected within ISACA. In red, most professional visible experts start their journey here. Mark the word professional. We have now left the personal and come to professional where we want to gather a lot. So how many of us are resident experts? I am no longer in that space and we all need to move to, to the next space. When you're still at this, there's a lot of work for you to do. And we're going to look at what do we do then to develop that professional a brand. So I'm moving us to number two, local heroes. If you're not a resident expert, let's move. If you're a resident expert, watch out. What do you need to do to be visible? The local heroes, they start to become known outside their circles. Debbie is now outside human resource. She's now in ISACA. Jimmy is now outside ISACA. He's now in HR training us on something IT related. So you start being known outside your circle, your professional circle. They are more active, listen to this, outside my circle of human resource. I am more active in community, often speaking at meetings for new ideas, business and their profession. 
They, ne they never leave their profession behind. Jimmy, I've noticed that you're a Rotarian. So I am sure Jimmy will move outside his circle. Go to his community if it's a, com it's a Rotary club in his community. Go to the Rotary club in that community. Be very active. Go to the church. Be very active. To the market, he is all over. There are meetings. He will bring on new ideas. Because remember, he has chosen to develop and mold his professional brand. So the brand does not stop with you. You must give it out to others. That is the impact of a brand. In his business, he's visible. Finally, in his profession. They move with their profession because that's what they are called to do. That's their purpose in life. I don't know how many of us are at local heroes level. Remember, these are levels of brand visibility. We have left the resident expert. You need to move to local heroes. And there's number three, the rising stars. These professional branded uh, individuals have developed a regional reputation. Mark the word regional. I have friends that have moved to the regional uh, level. So many of them, they have molded their brand that it has moved them now from, from the country, from where to the region, and they have become regional. They are fairly well known among peers in their area. They speak and write frequently on their area of expertise. So if we are talking profession, my friends, do you speak about your area of expertise? Do you even write anything about it? When we go to your LinkedIn, what have you written in regard to your area of expertise? And we are saying the rising stars tend to bring in higher quality. Now they are very productive. Because when you're looking at productivity, you're going to look at the quality and the quantity that you bring on the table. And these are the rising stars. How far are you, my friend, in modeling your professional brand? I got stuck here. I don't know. I need my, my mentor to come and, and, and be very honest with me. I don't know about you, whether you're at one, at two, at three. We are not limited. We have the industry rock stars. These are well known across the nation for their niche. Areas of expertise are across the nation. They attract high level clientele. We are going to see the benefits of if I develop my brand, what are the benefits? Look at that, high level of clientele. And therefore high level of clientele means your pockets are even getting happier. Friends, the reason we are all here is to be happy in different ways. But as a result, they become significant assets to their professions. Are you an asset to your profession? What profession are you? My research was showing me that in the 80s, uh, people only thought it was doctors and lawyers to be very professional. Now, it is required of all of us to groom that professional brand. We all need to be an asset to your profession. I will comfortably say I am. So as you develop your brand, remember, you must give back. You must be rich unto your profession. Don't leave it for yourself. Leave it for other people. Number five, where I believe all of us want to be, be visible in our branding, the global superstars. They have broken out of their niches, become recognized more broadly in their professions. The world wants to be associated with them. Underline the word, the world. Friends, your brand, which level is it? Village level, like we saw, community, regional, nation, or the world wants to associate with you. So already I'm showing you that if you put effort into this, every step will take you to the next step and you will be modeling your professional brand. I don't know which level we are at, but I'm hoping we are getting to good levels. You may ask me, but why should we even talk about this? Why should I even, you know, rebrand myself or develop that professional brand? So I went on to do my research with social brand builders. This is a very recent report of 2023. You could read about them. Why you must develop a professional brand. Look at the first one. 74% of consumers would likely trust someone who has a respected professional brand. This was done out of 100%. The 74% are saying, 
me, I will only trust those who have a respected professional brand. Is your brand respected? Consumers will not trust you if you don't have a respected brand. 82% of consumers agree that companies have bigger influence. If executives of these companies have developed personal brands, they can trust and follow. So if you're moving to the level of CEO, I had director Rita, and any of us could be at that level. Your consumers are only going to trust your brand if your leaders have developed personal, uh, professional brands. So you may be in an organization and thinking, what is failing us? But people are looking at your leader. Are they professional? What kind of brand do they bring on board? Those of us who want to grow in career, this is time to develop your brand because people will be attracted to your organization, to your business, because you have developed that kind of brand. 92% of employers would be willing to pay more for services of a professional. You may not work at a corporation, but you have a professional brand. Friends, look at this. People keep mentioning the professional brand that I can pay more if you're professional. You will get less if you don't have that professional brand. I will go to the second last one. 88% of these clients believe companies should invest in the personal brand of their leaders, executives, employees. If you're self-employed, put yourself there. This will aid in companies being more trusted and influential. Again, clients are saying, please invest in your people brand. Please invest in building your own brand today in this room. Please invest and pay attention in developing a professional brand. Because clients are saying they will only trust you if you have branded yourself at all levels, leaders, executives, employees, etc. 75% of older millennials are more likely to accept a job, not within a company whose founder has an established personal, put professional brand. So these days it's no longer about us giving jobs. People have a choice. They'll say, I'll not be employed here because I don't see any professionalism. It comes back to us. So this is a report that is it. Let me look at what people are talking about. Building your brand. Why must you build it? People are saying you must build it. You must have that professional brand. And allow me to proceed and say, what are those benefits? This you can read and you will agree with them. Before we go into how do we actually develop this brand, I need you to know why should I? What's in it for me? We've been talking about visibility, remember, at stages one, two, up to five. When you develop that professional brand, you will increase your visibility. I told you in the beginning that visibility is the ability. When you're not seen, it means you're not able. You can be under the table and you're saying, I can, I am able to do this. You must be visible wherever you are, in your profession, in your career, you must be visible. And this brand is going to propel your growth. It will give you a growth mindset. You will become so hungry. I've gone through this so I know it. I have a mentor who made me so hungry to grow. You need to do this. And all they were doing was sharpen my professional brand. It propels you to growth and you're, you're no longer comfortable at level one. You want to move to three and four and five. It definitely sets you apart, even among your peers and competition. You stand out from the crowd, that's how they call it. When you have that brand that everyone yearns for, there are people in this country we know, when they move somewhere, they're crowd pullers. They have been set apart. They have purposed to invest and work on their brand. Look at boosting confidence. You may think some of these are for the other people, for yourself. Those of you are online and you have children, you know now, the whole cell for children is building confidence. And this is professional branding. The moment I am, I am branded, I am confident about my brand, you do not know that light within myself. I will actually add that it will enhance your emotional wellness, what we sell as HR. Your emotional wellness is very important for you to know that I can stand among my peers and I'm at level five. They will all come to me, they'll believe in me, they'll trust me. Look at the trust. 
and definitely you'll go to coach and develop others. They will say, Debbie, we love your brand, but how did you model your brand? How did you shape your brand? You will come in to coach others, to give back to society. I love giving back. They say you shouldn't, don't go to heaven with, with, with a full basket, leave the basket here. Go empty, give back and you go empty. It will build your network. And for me, my network is my network. Today, I have built my network, I have added my network. So as we ask ourselves, do I have a brand? No, I need to develop a brand. Why? These are the reasons, my friends, and many more others. These are just a drop in the ocean, like I said, that I'm scratching the surface for you today. And then you'll go and dig up more. Why should I develop my brand? It will enhance your career prospects. It's not a lie. You will move and move. People will come to you. They'll headhunt you. They'll pick on you. If you have a personal business, people will definitely come to you for service. Like we said, that people will only trust those who have developed a personal brand at all levels, leadership, executives, and all. So my friends, this is where now the gist is, the W's of now developing our brand. The what, the when, the why, the how, and all of this is packed into a brand strategy. I know most of us lead the organizations and look at the organization strategy. You spend a week away uh, in Chobe looking at the strategy of the organization. So I want to challenge all of us this year. Sit down and develop a strategy for your brand. Have you thought about it? Or you want to just be in your car and you think about, okay, what am I going to do? No, no, sit down, sit down. If you have someone you're accountable to sit down and talk about it, this is my strategy of how I'm going to develop my brand. And we are saying that in your brand, this is a plan to take your reputation and career from relative obscurity, from the unknown to the high visibility. This is your, now the strategy. You are planning now, how am I going to get to where I want? Your strategy is going to describe you today. Where am I today as Debbie? And what level of visibility do I want to achieve? Remember we are saying your brand is being visible. It is your visibility in whichever sense you are. Whatever you possess, you're bringing them out. So in your strategy, you're going to look at today, where am I in my profession? How does my brand speak? And therefore map it to where you want to be. And these are things we've done. And you will, you will ably be ahead of strategy at, at an organization. But you ask your own strategy and zero, you don't have it. So we need to get back and be selfish and say, can I focus on self first? And the moment, of course, you excel at self, you will excel at everything else. The strategy is also going to lay out in detail the tactics, the tools, and the skills highlighted you will need to attain your goal. This will guide your daily journey. So as you develop your brand, you must have this, this detail. What tools do I need? What skills do I require? Do I actually need to go for what do I need to sign up for next? Jimmy, I had a line of courses. So what do you need to sign up for next? Strategic leadership? Professional, uh, professional branding as a course? I know those courses are there in marketing. So you need to understand what detail, whatever you need. Those are the Ws, the what, the when, the why. When do you want to get to your final destination? Is it going to take you a year to craft this? Six months? Are you a quick person? It will take you one month. These are questions for you. So we are saying one way to develop this, we need to have a brand strategy, a strategic plan in developing our brand. So I wanted to remind us that as I talk about these intrinsic elements, our brand strategy has also the extrinsic, and we all remember, that intrinsic is within, like I was talking about confidence, you know, boosting within. Extrinsic will be out. People will see. They will see. And most of the things I've talked about are really intrinsic value. So you need to remember that in my strategy, I must look at detail my extrinsic and the intrinsic. 
which the intrinsic we are so good at uh, that we forget the extrinsic. That you will meet someone who has reached that level, but when you look at the outer shelter, you're like, geez, what happened? So as you're developing that professional brand, put the two together, you must embed the two so that they are, they balance, balance yourself internally and externally. And this is why I wanted just to bring that out. So the brand strategy elements, which is more of the intrinsic, you need to find your values. What is most important to you as an individual? Remember I said not as a family, we are focusing on you. In your professional journey, what is very important for you? What do you value? When we stand up and I say, my values, integrity, is it real? What do you value most in your profession? Please detail these values down and be very honest with yourself. What is most important in your profession? Is it growth? Is it service delivery? Is it leadership? Detail all these. And then move on to say, find your strengths. What are you naturally good at? So my strengths I'll share with you today is this that I'm doing. If you woke me up from bed and say, Debbie, come and take us through. Um, okay, customer service. No, it's no longer called customer service, customer obsession. I will be excited because that is what I'm naturally good at. All of us, God gave us the natural gifts. What are your natural gifts? Now that is your strength. What are those natural gifts that you have? Match them to your profession. Please, John, don't tell me you're good at running. It's your natural gift. Yes. But now what I suck at. Uh -huh. How will you embed it? So look for those natural gifts that you can embed into your profession and put them into your strategy elements. I hope you're seeing that, that intersection. Now, the third one, which is a topic that we can talk about for a whole week, find your why. What is your purpose in life? What is your purpose on earth? Are you just living and moving? Are you waking up, go to work, come back home? What is your purpose? Now your purpose, my friends, is that that God created you to do. I have a brother who went to school and did uh, accountancy as an accountant. Along the way he said, no, this is not my purpose. He went and did a master's in, in uh, theology. He's now a reverend. Look at that. That is his purpose. His heart pulled him to his purpose. And most of us, you could find we are going through the same. Please find out your purpose. Now, this is your brand strategy element. You need to detail it properly. I told you, I'll just scratch the surface. You will do the rest, adult learning. So you must have this and your intersection is then your strategy. You must understand your values, find them, understand your strengths. What are you naturally good at? Find your why, your purpose and leave your purpose. Do not stop there. Now, again, we have a sign in the middle, the intrinsic, and we are going into the SWOT analysis. We all did SWOT in school and left it there. So now I want all of us, or I pray that each one of us will do an actionable SWOT analysis. Remember, you're looking at your brand strategy. And this SWOT should be done on your professional brand of today as Deborah in HR. Okay, what are my strengths? Detail them. What are my weaknesses, by the way? I have. We all do. And these will block our professional brand. What threats do I even have? What threats do I have? I do have. When every day they're telling us very soon we won't need people in the workplace, and I'm like, really? Is that a threat? Is it real? But with the way things are moving, then I need to be prepared. The future is different. It's a threat. What opportunities do I have? Now that I, I can enhance my skills, what opportunities do you have in your profession to, to enhance it, to build that brand? That's the sort of analysis you're going to do. So you'll come and do your elements, your values, your strengths, and your purpose, and sit down and do your sort of analysis. Don't do this in one day. No, month one, look at your strengths. Month two, you can look at your weaknesses. The next month, you can look at your threats. Buy your seat with someone. I always love to have accountability partners. There's a time I asked one of my friends to tell me some of my weaknesses. Oh, my goodness. I almost ran away from myself. 
You need to do that. You will be shocked that you are not who you think you are. But it's good to know all this as you develop your professional uh, brand. Now we have the ABCD of the extrinsic elements. I am leaving this part for intrinsic. It's mostly within, but it's no longer enough. And I'll tell you this, it's no longer enough. Again, I'll take you to my profession. When we're doing these interviews, someone will tell you, I have done a master's, I have done X, Y, Z. You'll have 10 people with the master's, they all want the same position. See, the savior is here. You go to the extrinsic and it's as easy as easy because everyone is now knowledgeable. Everyone has professional courses. Now I'll start with the A, the A, B, C, D of extrinsic elements. Those are the outer elements that we can see. That if you met me today, you will say, ah, this is the Debbie. This is how shabby she looks. So A is appearance. Appearance, I'm not talking about beauty. If God gave you the beauty, well and good. Appearance, how are you dressed? People play around with dressing, it's very key. It's part of your professional brand. In your profession, how do you dress? Find out. How are we supposed to dress? So how, how, what's your appearance? How well kept are you? I, 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 know, I know some professions with us, us, it's okay, we are in overalls. We can keep our beards, we can do all this. My friend, the world has moved on. You will say it's not clothes that work, but when you get into a space, everyone will first look at how you appear. They will either give you attention or deny you the attention. So we need to be very careful. There's a lot packed into appearance that I want you to dig further and say, how should I appear? And for different occasions. Like I gave an example of Jimmy that he could be in his Rotary Club. He could be at church. So for the different occasions, he will dress differently, appear differently, but professionally. It counts a lot. The first, the first time I see you, I make up a lot. And that first impression will never go, my friends. That first impression will never go away. So be mindful of the A. B is the behavior. That behavior, good or bad, acceptable? What is the required behavior in your profession? I mean, human resources, I told you, sometimes I'm, I'm seated somewhere and they start a conversation and someone will quickly say, hey, we have HR here. When I'm not even bothered by that, but people know that your profession does not promote maybe this kind of conversation, this kind of behavior, this kind of dressing. So in your profession, whoever is online, I do not know what you promote. Be mindful about the bee. And your behavior rubs off, by the way. It rubs off into your environment. So it's so extrinsic, it goes out. You give it out. And people will inform, will form perceptions of you because of the way you behave. And these days you'll hear, for those who are parents on this line, with all due respect, they will say, ah, parents of these days, no, we must instill still the behavior in the children as they grow up. It is our duty. So back as you model your professional uh, brand, be cautious. On the sea, it is communication. At my workplace this week, we are running effective communication. It sounds very simple, but so complicated. How do you unpack your communication? When you're speaking to people, do you actually allow them to speak to you? Do you actually listen or you only hear and move on? Listen and hear. What are your communication skills? Where do you need to improve? In the writing skills? There's a lot in, in communication. And in communication, they always say, pay attention to the unsaid, by the way. So tonight you're going to look out for what I've not said. That will inform your brand. You will say, Debbie said this, but I think there's something she didn't say. Your, your expressions on the faith communicate a lot. So whenever you're in people, whenever you're anywhere, mind your facial expression. It's part of the communication. It can make that, it can kill your professional brand. That person never smiles. That person is never warm. People want that. They know you have the degrees and the master, that is done. They are looking for the A, B, C, D now. After you doing your, 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 your sort analysis, your values, your strengths, please come and look at your A, B, C, D, my friends. It can kill you. 
the digital print, my, the digital print. What are you sending on social media? If all of us today, right now, we say, go, go to your status and check, what's there? What's running, what's flying? What's there? Twitter, what's there? What's up? What are you sharing? Busy sending. My friends, this will pull down your professional brand. The digital sprint will never be wrapped. I was telling my children, I have teenagers. I told them whatever you put on, on, on a digital platforms will never be wrapped. Your children will find it. Their children will find it. So we need to be cautious as we model our professional brands to say, what am I leaving on the digital print? I will not dwell so much on that, but let's be very cautious. Even the picture you're putting, what is it saying? Ladies, uh huh. those images we put, I don't know, but it's not, it's, it's not leaving your brand un, un, unharmed. It's harming you so much. So let's be cautious, friends, as we develop our brand, professional brand, focus on the A, B, C, D. If you don't take anything tonight, take A, B, C, D. It's as simple as that. That our extrinsic elements are harming our brands. Explore opportunities to enhance your extrinsic elements. There are those areas where you could be weak, or you have areas of improvement. Let's call it that way. Please do it. Go ahead and do again a strategy for this area and say, how do I now improve my bit here? And other areas. This one I'll take a minute. I'm about to come to the end. Uh, most impactful tools used by visible experts. This is branding. Elizabeth Hare is, is a branding expert, expert. And and say speaking engagements contribute 66.7 percent. So for me, this even where I am happy to social media, attending networking events, involvement with trade associations. Where are you involved? That your brand is out there shining, that it is visible. Do not sit on your brand. There's a purpose where you're in that brand. Give it to others. They say a brand is not for you. It's for someone else. Call to action. I trust that when I develop this professional brand, I will grow. So we've looked at the process, how to develop. Trust the process. This is the process that actually you're going to learn more. A brand evolves. So when I feel like I am on top i'm so visible changing it should evolve to speak to my environment i have put in red protect your brand friends when you develop this brand please protect it protect it jealously because once your brand is broken the repair is very expensive and you know what i mean you've seen some broken brands and repairing them has been so expensive, or oh, you may never repair it. You see, it's trust. You break the trust. People have put this trust in you, and it is gone. Hey. Bro, can't see you, can't get you well. So please protect your professional brands. Hello, Deborah. We have lost your network seem not to be clear. Call to action. Have that good brand that is actually going to make you. Hello, hi Jimmy. Yeah, we are lost you uh, when you are trying to explain i think the second point so you could come again from protect your brand i think thank you
Hello, Deborah. GBM backstory about this network not yet clear. Hi, Jimmy. Yes, yes, please. Uh, Sorry, you can get me now. Yeah, uh, we can get you. Please proceed. I'm actually coming to, sorry, the network, uh, I don't know where you, I lost you. Okay, it was here. If you focus on the process of getting there, taking- Excuse me, Deborah. Excuse yes, me, please? Deborah. We had lost you on the previous slide. Could you please uh, repeat? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is it on that? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. So I, uh, you could read this uh, uh, saying, trust the process as we go through, we've, I've taken you through what you can do to develop your professional brand. Trust that it will actually work for you. Um, what you believe in is what you get. Scientific, but you will go through and get that right brand you're looking for. A brand evolves, don't get stuck. As changes happen, keep moving. And protect your brand once broken to protect your brand jealously. I was saying a brand can make, can break you or make you. A good brand will make you stay away from the bad brand because it will break you. So focus on developing that professional brand, which is good. Remember from the bottom of the mountain, I am winding up. The summit always looks unattainable. If you focus on the process of getting there, one small step at a time you'll find yourself looking down with amazement. It's a journey well worth taking. Take the journey and develop your professional brand. Be obsessed with your brand, it's a game of passion. Like I said, I love what I do. Be passionate about what you do. Be passionate about your profession. It will help you to say, what kind of brand do I want to put out there? important make a difference in your profession that's the reason you are looking out to develop a profession for the other person back from make a difference wherever you are and exceed your potential sorry about the network Hello, Deborah. Ah, uh, but we are good at hope. Thank you so much. I wish you all. Hi, Jimmy. Oh, well, thank you, Deborah. I, the, the last word, I think you are wishing us something good. Uh, <laughs> I need to cut you off before you could <laughs> complete. Sorry. Uh, if you say that again, uh, for the benefit. Oh, of the, yeah. I was wishing everyone a powerful professional brand. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I think everyone has uh, paid uh, attention. And uh, Deborah, is, uh, from your from your profile, I think you have nailed it. And I think uh, the mass that uh, I've attended today, I think, is simply because they knew who you are and they they were here to learn. And I think uh, from now on, we know uh, what level for branding we are in. Either we are resident experts, we are local heroes, so we are rising stars, or we are industry, or we are global, kind of. We now know what we need to do. And I think uh, we had uh, asked uh, members to uh, share in some questions, uh, but most of the thing we have received in the chat have been uh, 
just appreciation uh, to Deborah for the wonderful presentation. And uh, maybe I'll give uh, uh, from within the members, just I'll give like two minutes uh, for anybody with question to uh, put up an uh, pin position to ask such that, you know, branding is something that is not easy and I, no, no one knows it all, but it's developed slowly and no one has finally developed theirs, but you keep on, even those who are at the highest level that are still developing. If you sleep, I think it is, as Deborah has put it, uh, if you allow, if you don't protect your brand, once it's broken, it becomes very expensive to repair it. So do we have any question online, members? Just I'm giving some few minutes and we can have, there's one question from the chat uh, from Anonymous. Maybe Deborah, you can take this one up. Somebody is saying, I'd like to know how to be visible as a leader. How does one move from being invisible to getting people to see you? I think uh, Deborah, you can take that one right away. Uh, as we get to the next question. Thank you so much, uh, Jimmy. And uh, the person who has shared the question, I pray that my network doesn't break down. Uh, how does someone uh, be visible as a leader to the people that you lead? Leadership. Visibility is ability. As a leader, are you able to deliver? Are you able to lead on your people? Are you able to guide your people? Do you actually know your purpose as a leader? Do you know your role as a leader, assigned role now that has got your KPIs? So as a leader, people will only see you, trust you if you deliver on that that you have committed, committed to do or been assigned to do. Visibility is ability, I said that. If you're not able to deliver, even if you have the title, my dear, then you're not a leader. So deliver give back to the people, mentor them, coach them. Then they will see you visible. They'll say, yes, Debbie is actually our leader. But they will not say Debbie is our leader because I hold that title. No, what do they get from me? What do I give back to them? So if you're that kind of leader, my dear, empower yourself first so that you can give back to your people, give back to them. If you want to be visible, work on your ability. I will keep it at that. We lead, uh, they say, walk the talk. So walk the talk of being a leader. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Deborah. I think you are on point. Just uh, hope the person who asked the question has managed to get those points. Uh, somebody from Augusta is saying, thank you so much, Deborah, for the presentation. It's asking whether the PowerPoint would be in position to be shared. I think the Isaka Kampala chapter will answer that later. Uh, Sharon is saying, so powerful. I thank you for the presentation. And uh, then Nicola is saying, thank you for the informative. I'm scratched indeed. I think he's saying uh, his branding is broken. Any tips on how to repair my brand? You could take that one. Thank you, Jimmy. That's, that's an interesting word. The brand is broken. How can I repair this? So we had the steps of developing your brand. Yes. So when it's broken, go back to number one. Go back to having a strategy again. Restrategize, like we say. Have another strategy and look at maybe, actually look at before. You see, for example, if you don't perform this year, you look at why didn't we perform? So how can we do better? Look at why your brand broke. And then re-strategize and say, now I need to change direction. Do I need to change the people around me? Do I need to change my actions? Do I need to change the values I had then? Like I said, a brand evolves. So it's broken, it's not all lost. You can still revive it. So re-strategize. Look at your intrinsic and your extrinsic values that you had then and look at now, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. Please also get feedback from the people you trust. They will tell you your, your brand got broken because of X, Y, Z, and we think you can now improve it. So have that village around you. I think I didn't talk about it. You need to have a village as you develop your brand. What is that village that you trust? You know, long time ago, we had these villages where we're comfortable. Things have changed now. So have that village of professionals around you. Three, four, five, sit together and say, people, I'm struggling here. Where can you help me? 
the power of a village is immense. So use that power of a village if you have in your trust and you'll build back your brand. Go back to what we've talked about and implement it again. Not all is lost. I give you that hope. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deborah. I hope that the person whose brand has been broken, you can rebuild. Uh, Deo Okello is asking, what are the key steps to branding? Uh, maybe you can just highlight that. I think you have talked about steps in branding, but you can just come up because members join at different time. Thank you. Over to Deborah. Thank you. I'll just talk through them and because uh, because of network, but trust that you will do it. So those key steps, I'll just take us through the strategy when you're going to build uh, to develop your brand. You need to find your values, what is most important to you. OK, what are those values that you hold so dear to yourself? So as you come up with a strategy outline and say, as Debbie, these are my values. And as I want to develop my professional brand, this is where I want to go. So you need to know where you are now and where you want to go. What is the difference? So what are you going to do in between there? When do you want to get there? Why do you want to get there? So as you look at your values, what's important to you that you must have as a professional, then also find your strengths. And I said your strengths are things you're naturally good at. Look at those things you're naturally good at because they'll give you an edge in getting to the top of branding your profession. From there, then you move to your why, your purpose. So find your values, your strengths, and your purpose. Your purpose is why you were created on this earth. And I gave an example of my brother who did accounting and later found he was supposed to, he's called to be a reverend. And he went and did a master's in theology. So find your purpose while you're cutting out your profession. You could be in a wrong space. Finding your purpose will help you. I found my purpose. So you need to do your values, strength, and your purpose. And you tell her, uh, tell her out a strategy. So these are elements in your strategy to develop um, your brand. I added the sort analysis that you need to cut out your sort analysis, your strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in a very candid way. Sit down and look at what weaknesses do I actually have that I shouldn't carry along as I develop my professional brand. What opportunities are there? And I gave examples of the threats for us now. I could say in nature, where they're saying there would be a robot to do all my work. So that threat, what opportunity do I have now then? What can I train into? So you're defining your professional brand and do a proper strategy and say, when do I do this? Who supports me here? How do I even get there? And why? Know the why of why you're developing this. Uh, like I said, I'm scratching the surface. Please read, get in detail, and then map what, uh, what is best for you. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Deborah. You have elaborated. And uh, Andrew Machiko is saying the presentation was golden and saying a wonderful presentation as well. I think uh, I would also like maybe you to answer um, uh, participant will ask whether the presentation will be shared. Maybe you could confirm if these are not uh, proprietary material and confidential in nature. You can confirm then it will be shared through Isaka Kampala chapter. Thank you. Yes. John will handle that after this, I think. But yes, it's available. Okay. We have Anonymous saying, how can you find your purpose early? Okay. can take that as well. Okay, how do you find your purpose, Ali? I don't know what you mean by Ali, my friend. <laughs> Ali in age, but I'll answer it the way it is. <laughs> so, some people find their purpose early in life, others find it late in life. The most important thing is at whatever point you find it, leave your purpose. At whatever point you find it, leave your purpose. I had a friend who said they found their purpose while they were already 50 years, but they are living their purpose and happily. So the how, Ali, I don't think there is a time. None of us has a time to say, I must find my purpose when I'm 15, 20, 30, 40. But now that you have heard this gospel, find your purpose at whatever point you are. Find your purpose in life. Why did God create you? 
Why did he bring you on earth? And I said, your purpose will always pull you to its side. The, your, your purpose on earth will pull you no matter what you do, no matter how much you want to run out from it. So find your purpose. At what point? Jimmy, that will be tricky, but all of us can find purpose at a different point. And if you haven't found your purpose, then sit down again, like I said, ask yourself those questions. What is it that I love doing? What, what keeps me awake? What is it that if you wake me up, I will do happily, no grumbling. They actually say your purpose, no one needs to pay you for it. No one does. You will happily do it anywhere. So go ahead and find your purpose at any point. Thank you, Deborah. This one is from Chris Castillier from Housing Finance Bank. He thanked you for the presentation and saying it was powerful. Uh, it's adding that he, uh, he feel you needed to add this statement that change is key in making a brand because it's important to become the change you want to see. Stay blessed. Okay, I don't know whether you agree with that assertion as well from Christopher Castillier. You can make a comment there as well. Okay, thank you, Chris, for your comment. Definitely, I say that I make uh, people and culture transformation enthusiast. At whatever point when you are trying to move from point A to B, uh, moving your, your brand from being um, invisible to being a professional brand, that is change. And you must lead the change in yourself. You must accept the change and you must understand how to live with, uh, sorry, to move into that change. You are the champion number one of change in your life and uh, change happens at any moment. So the fact that we are talking about this, I am sure change is happening to some people. Yes, I definitely agree. We must be the change that we want to see. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Uh... Thank you, Deborah. I don't see any other more questions. And uh, if really the questions are done, I would like to hand over Jimmy? to Jimmy. Jimmy? Yes. yes. There is another question from Anonymous. Okay. It says, I would like to know how to be visible as a leader. How does one move from being invisible to getting people to see you? I think uh, that was already answered. Oh, OK. Thank you. Yeah, that was already answered. Uh, I don't know whether Deborah agree with me as well. You had answered that. Yeah, yes, yes, I answered it. Yeah. So unless we have questions that are online uh, from the panelists, whether you have any question, Rita, Maurice, John, uh, do you have any question online or are you okay? So I can proceed to hand over to John to proceed with the rest of the programs. Uh, Deborah, I'm so blessed to. Yeah, if somebody is adding some question, maybe quickly before we I hand over. He's saying, as a human resource, what have you seen as the key pitfall when branding? <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. That's 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 quite interesting. <clears throat> Pitfall, while branding yourself, the biggest is I want to copy and paste. People want to copy because Debbie is like this. I want to be like Debbie. Because uh, Debbie has done this course, I think I should also do it. You don't know why I did it in the first place, but you're copying and pasting. So as we come up with our professional brands, we, we are unique. Each one of us is unique. Uh, look at what speaks into you, into your purpose into your life, into where you want to be. You, you don't have to copy and paste. Even if we are twins, there are things that we can't do the same way. So that's the highest pitfall, Jimmy. People want to copy. People want to live in other people's shoes. You will not fit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ebra. I think that was precise. And I is actually have an agreement because uh, that's one of the things that disturb everyone. and. Mary is saying you never disappoint, Debbie. A lot to think, thank, think about. Many thanks. I thank you for that. Uh, I think uh, I let me take this opportunity to hand over to John uh, to continue the rest of the program. Deborah, I'm so happy. I think I suck a Kampala chapter should proceed to invite you more and more. And I think for physical meetings as well to come and break some of these because I know many many of us 
our branding strategies have been always to to maybe not look at the is key personal branding is key to uh taking your level to as a professional uh brand as well so branding most times we look at as organizational initiative but today you have given us a good uh way of making us ourselves uh known visible as leaders as wherever we are and also knowing the different steps so i thank you so much uh and i hand over the program back to john uh, to continue with the rest over to john thank you good evening uh, thank you very much jimmy for moderating the session uh, i can say uh it's been an interesting one uh debbie uh, I know you never disappoint when it comes to issues of human resource. That's why uh, I had that confidence that uh, you'll do justice to the topic. So uh, thank you very much, Debbie. Uh, you've done justice to the topic, and uh, I believe uh, many of us on call can testify to that. Uh, I've, I've come to meet Debbie uh, on a number of platforms uh, when she's speaking about, uh, about human resource and management. And trust me, uh, Debbie is someone who is passionate about developing human resources. Uh, she's someone who uh, is not you know, self-centered that uh, she will uh, keep knowledge to herself. She always loves sharing out knowledge. So uh, Debbie, allow me to thank you very much in a special way for sharing uh, uh, that information with us, for uh, sharing with the Isaka Kampala chapter. We are very privileged and honored to have you this evening. Uh, something that uh, probably uh, was not addressed uh, that uh, I can uh, post to you uh, as we conclude. Uh, so which advice, can, Debbie, this goes back to you, which advice can you give to someone who is facing a career stagnation? Uh, probably you can uh, take a minute or two to advise uh, those who are facing a career stagnation, someone has been an officer uh, for good. Thank you very much. If I proceed. Thank you, John. Uh, John, the, you, okay, this is interesting because this is a whole other topic, if, if I might say. Career stagnation, career transition is another whole big topic that we focus on in human resource. Uh, it is very hard for me to advise that person because I don't know for how long they are stuck. Where are they stuck? Why are they stuck? But the simple, those are the answers I'm giving. Have they found out why they are stuck in that place? Have they found out where they want to go? And are they working into that direction? Say, I am an officer who wants to grow into, I'm a nature officer, I want to become a natural manager. What am I doing around myself? Or am I waiting for my manager to, to recognize me and pick me and say, Debbie, you've been promoted? No. So what is that person doing around themselves? Have you, are you uh, developing yourself? Uh, are you adding value to yourself? Have you done extra courses? Are you doing actually extra work? What's your productivity like? John, that's a very big topic. So they could look at that, but uh, it's a conversation they can have with a coach, uh, career transition and career growth. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Debbie, for uh, throwing some light onto that. Uh, just to add something to someone who was talking, uh, to, uh, who was uh, inquiring about the age at which they can uh, uh, discover themselves, uh, I'll just uh, like remind that colleague of ours that uh, when you look at uh, Colonel Sanders, uh, the founder of uh, KFC, uh, they discovered their, their passion at the age of 65. So it's never too late for you to discover who you are and to discover your passion. So uh, just work uh, towards uh, developing that passion and uh, you'll be there. Then uh, the bit of uh, the presentation template, uh, Debbie will share with us the template and then we shall be able to share with uh, the members. Uh, yes, uh, uh, let's proceed with uh, the announcements. Uh, yes, uh, members, our next webinar will be on the 28th of July and it, it will be under the theme threat intelligence and information sharing. Uh, exploiting its role in enhancing cyber resilience, and it will be presented by Mr. Kenneth Palliam, the president at ISACA South Africa chapter. Uh, announcement two, uh, our 12th annual East Africa Information Security Conference will be held from the 27th to 29th of September 
at Speak Resort Munyonyo, please plan accordingly to attend. Uh, we have the registration link and uh, more information will be sent out to our social, our socials in, the, in a few days to come. Then uh, the last, uh, we have um, a data protection and privacy, data protection and privacy compliance. Uh, well, uh, EY uh, carried out a survey on uh, data protection on Uganda data protection and privacy compliance to draw on insights from business leaders on where the organizations are on their compliance journey. The survey report will be launched to the business leaders at the pub and the public on the 18th of July, 2023 in a hybrid event. Join EY virtually uh, for this event by registering through that link. We shall share it shortly. Uh, the topic will be data protection and privacy report launch. Then the venue is Kampala Serena Hotel at this room. Uh, time will be 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. And the date will be 18th of July, 2023. Please mark those uh, dates. Um, allow me to hand over to uh, Rita to take us to the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John, for that. Uh, Debbie, I can't say it all. You have already said it all. You've done justice to that topic. Thank you very much. One of the things I've picked is protect and guard your brand jealously. It, it is repairable in case it gets broken. Thank you for that. It's very key. In other words, reputational risk. That's what you was trying to talk about here. I picked that and I believe it's very important. And uh, it resonates with me very much. I love protecting my, my reputation very much. And some other thing that you talked about was what other people talk about you when you're not in the room. That's very important. What do other people talk about you when you're not there? That's your brand. What do other people talk about Debbie when she's not here? What will the members talk about Debbie when she gets off? the webinar. Thank you very much. I don't want to talk a lot about this and uh, to thank you much more than this because I know the vice president is coming to talk. To thank you on behalf of the chapter. Thank you very much. At this time, I want to take this opportunity to appreciate our directors who are on the call. We have the vice president, Mr. Maurice Tarema. Thank you very much for joining us. We also have our membership director. We have Joseph Mr. Joseph Fuluvega, thank you very much for joining us. We have the director at large, Mr. Elson Twinomugisha, thank you very much for joining us. Of course, as the board, we also work with a team of volunteers, committee members who have also joined us this evening. Thank you very much. We have Mr. Jime Kisomba, who is the, on the finance committee. We have Mr. Ayek Jime, who is our former communications director, thank you very much. We have Mr. Brian Rutevembera, the former vice president, and as as well as a member of the membership committee. We have Ms. Barbara Wawide. She's a member of the Shield Tech and Education Committee. We have Mr. Bernard Arinaitre, who is a member of the Marketing and Communications Committee. We have Ms. Mariam Turihehi, who is the Shield Tech Committee member. We have Ms. Sharon Chisinde, Education Committee and Shield Tech events. We have Ms. Diana Agaba, who is a member of the Shield Committee. We also have a member from our sister chapter, that's Rwanda chapter, Mr. Augustus Indamaje from the Rwanda chapter. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, before I hand over to the vice president, there is one important communication I still want to call MEC. Um, there is a new development regarding our certificates. We are no longer going to be sharing our certificates manually on mail. They shall be automatically uploaded on your account when you log in. I just want to share my screen to show you briefly how this shall be done. I don't know, am I allowed to share my screen? Please, briefly. The host, please allow me to share the screen. Uh, please read And I share the members. Yes, please. Please, you can share the screen. Okay. It is coming. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen now? 
Not yet. No. Wow. Well, uh, if it can't be shared, maybe I can just mention. Okay, is it shared now? Yes, it is. Can you see? Okay, when you log into your account, you just need to click on ISACA CPE records. Uh, you'll automatically be able to see where your certificates are going to be. For instance, those who attended the last CPE, their certificates are already uploaded. The data privacy in the AI era, they are already down, they are already uploaded. So you need just to click here, and then your certificate will be downloaded. So please take note that certificates are kept here for a period of one year. So after mm -hmm. one year, these certificates will be off here. So when you get it, just download it, and you'll be able to have it and or keep it somewhere. Thank you very much for joining us once again. We appreciate you. At this point, please allow me to invite our vice president to give us the closing remarks and to thank our speaker. Thank you very much. Over to you, Maurice. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Rita, our board secretary. Uh, just confirm if I'm audible. Yes, you are. Thank you very much. Um, it is uh, seven minutes after we had promised to close, so uh, you'll allow me not to um, go over what has already been uh, communicated. Uh, Deborah, thank you so much for your very intriguing and uh, thought uh, building and developing uh, um, sharing with us this evening. Um, I think um, many of us have uh, really been thanked, but I just want to single out the committee that is uh, uh, running um, these uh, CPE events, uh, and especially our coordinator, Mr. Uh, John Chikubier. And thank you very much for the organization. I would like to, uh, as a way of closure, remind ourselves that. Uh, uh, the, the info information the information security conference is on uh, 27th to 29th of September. It will be at Speak Resort Munyonyo. And uh, the theme is embracing change, empowering leadership. And I think this resonates very well with what Deborah has been speaking to today. So please uh, make your make it uh, make it a date. Uh, save the date. It will be uh, uh, one million Uganda shillings for members and uh, one point one million for non-members. We are also um, there are will be accommodation uh, provisions uh, which are not part of the conference fee. But if you're interested in accommodation, we will, we will be providing uh, information on that uh, as well. And uh, at Isaka Kampala chapter, we are very committed to ensuring that we provide opportunity for us to grow uh, continually and to educate ourselves in a continual manner. And this is the reason why this series of CPEs are there. It's the reason why we hold the annual conference is the reason why we are doing everything that we can uh, to see that we can improve our value proposition to you as members and to the general public. Once again, I bring you greetings from the president, uh, Mr. Bernard Wanyama, who was unable to make it this evening. And it is my uh, pleasure and honor to uh, declare this uh, CPE event closed. Thank you very much, and please do stay, uh, keep up with us. Back to you, Mr. John. Yes, thank you very much, uh, our Vice President, uh, Mr. Morris. Uh, members, just remind you once again, we shall be sending out information uh, regarding uh, uh, the July 28th uh, webinar. Please, uh, let's register on time. Let's book our seats, and uh, we learn. Thank you very much, uh, our presenter uh, and uh, the moderator. Thank you very much for the other members that have been on the call. Have a blessed night.